Hi, so my name is Richard. I'm from Global Distribution. We're the Atomus distributor for the UK, Ireland and Nordics. Uh, we're here at BVE 2017. Uh, and really what we're going to talk about here is the latest Atomus Flame series uh, and also the Inferno, uh, which sits just above that. So the difference with the uh, previous generation product is we have a new industrial design with the Flame series. So we have integrated bumpers and screen protector. We now have a dual battery system as well and a separate DC uh, input. Um, the Ninja Flame is our HDMI in and out with a mic and line level uh, analog audio input. The Shogun Flame that sits just above it adds SDI in and out as well to that. And then the Shogun Inferno that sits above has quad link SDI input but it also supports higher frame rate. The Ninja Flame and the Shogun Flame will record 4K up to P30 and 1080 up to P60. The Shogun Inferno that sits at the top of the product family will support um, 4K P60 and up to 240 frames per second um, of 2K or HD. So the other difference is the actual monitoring technology. So with the Flame series, Atomus launched their Atom HDR technology. So these are a 1500 nit brightness screen. So they're nearly four times brighter than the previous generation products with the Shogun and the Ninja Assassin. Um, they were around a 400 nit brightness. Uh, this at 1500 nit is day bright. So I can use this outside at full brightness, hood free uh, for very, very accurate monitoring and shooting and ease of use. We also have the HDR technology in here. So HDR is the biggest change in video for a generation. Uh, it is resolution independent, so it's just as relevant to HD footage as it is for uh, 4K and for 8K coming along in the future. What it, HDR essentially does in a nutshell is it's using brightness capabilities of modern displays to show an increased dynamic range. So Rec. 709, which is what we're used to as the HD TV spec, which essentially is technology that's been around since 1990 and a very small change from what, was, what preceded that with Rec. 601, governed us to a 100 nit limitation and around about five to six stops of dynamic range, limited color information as well. So HDR now has a 1,000 nit limitation, well, sort of starting point rather. Uh, certain standards go up to 10,000 nit, so as screens get brighter over time, that will increase. But this equates to showing dynamic range that's sort of 10 plus stops of dynamic range. And we're talking about the ability to show wider color gamuts on the screen as well. So anyone that's shot with a log-based camera is actually capable of producing HDR content and has, in fact, been shooting high dynamic range for a long time. The difference is, is when you've been looking at that off the camera on a monitor or grading to it and displaying it for delivery, it's been in this Rec. 709, five to six stops kind of boundary. So what the Atom HDR engine does is it allows us to look at the image in Rec. 709, so the way that the uh, monitoring section here works is that we have our native source video input. So here I'm monitoring the S-Log3 feed coming from the camera. I can do a log to video, so I can see what that now looks like in Rec. 709 from the log. It's built in, so we support the, the log curves from Sony, Panasonic, Canon, ARRI, RED, JVC, Fuji, all the kind of people that make uh, logarithmic uh, curves. We also have uh, custom LUTs, so we can see our own LUTs. So this is all the same sort of technology that we had in our previous generation, but we now have this high brightness capability, so up to 1500 nit for uh, hood-free monitoring outside. The way the Atom HDR engine works is I can come into the Atom HDR and I can look at a waveform now that doesn't go to my 0 to 100% IRE. It now shows me the actual capability of the log curve. So S-Log3 is a very high dynamic range capable log curve. And I have this ceiling here. So I've now exposed this image based on what you know, Sony would say I should do for, uh, for, for S-Log3. Uh, for Rec. 709, which is why this looks fine as Rec. 709. In HDR, I have this auto HDR button. What has now happened is I've now raised the ceiling of the scene that I can um, create to. So what is, what is now actually um, available to me is the ability to push this and actually expose my log image correctly. So what we do with this auto HDR is we've just analyzed the log curve and worked out how much dynamic range is essentially in the scene that we're currently set up based on how I've exposed. So I can now raise my exposure and now I'm looking at a true HDR image directly from the center of the camera. I can potentially now push this a little bit further because I've opened up my uh, 
my iris and can now continue to expose. And you can see here that I've got my very rich blacks. I have all of my uh, spectral highlights and I have all the luminance and color information within that. And that's because basically HDR is not only increasing the brightness of something, it's, it's using the brightness to show increased dynamic range, but because of the wider color gamuts that we're handling with HDR and the fact that realistically an HDR premium certified television is capable of showing you around 22% more color than we're used to seeing to date, I actually get color volume within that as well. So in that increased luminance, I also benefit from this wider color gamut to show more information. So if I do a, a zoom in on some of these points, I can see a lot of uh, excellent kind of detail within all of those highlights. They have color and volume rather than just kind of clipping out. The, the benefit of this is, is this is now showing me exactly what the camera sensor is seeing. And it's actually very similar to what my eyes actually see in front of me. And that is the real, pleasure and exciting development that HDR brings is it's a technology that allows you to see on a screen for the first time an image that is much closer to what you actually see in reality. And this is a very deliverable technology. You know, Netflix, Amazon have been delivering HDR content for a very long time. YouTube is now enabled, so independent filmmakers, etc., can use our devices to expose correctly for HDR, see what it looks like, even use this as a grading monitor for your computer by the fact that we also support an input as a PQ input, so I can set DaVinci Resolve or whatever I'm grading within to output a signal to me, and I'll say it's you know the SMPT ST2084 HDR standard I want to work to the DCI P3 color gamut and this will now show me a correct image out of my grading package and I could use this as a very cost-effective seven inch grading monitor. Um, the benefit is is even if I'm not delivering for um, HDR and I'm actually just still delivering for SDR, if I now look at my log image this can still be graded for SDR. And if anything, it's gonna give me a cleaner SDR delivery because I've exposed at the clean end of the sensor. When you shoot with log, your uh, sort of native ISO, your noise level is at a fixed point. So if I let more light in rather than adjusting the ISO, I'm just reducing my signal, you know, my signal to noise ratio is much better. So I actually have a much cleaner image. If I had exposed this essentially based on what I should be doing for Rec. 709, I would be exposing far lower down here to get the image that I want. And if I came back and did a noise check, you'd see now I have an incredibly noisy, grainy image. So that is one of the key benefits that the Atomus, uh, Atom HDR engine is giving you, is the ability to actually expose an image correctly based on the scene that you're shooting and the camera and the log curve that you're using to achieve that. Whether you choose to grade for HDR or not, that's, uh, that's up to you. But it's a technology that is gonna be deliverable and is, is deliverable today. And over the next year, we're gonna see broadcasters massively adopting it for traditional HD broadcasts, as well as specifically mastered or future broadcasts of, of 4K content. So that in a nutshell is, is really what we've added uh, into the new generation of our Flame series. The Inferno uses exactly the same Atom HDR technology as well. Within here, we also have the ability to output in HDR. So normally all Atomus products have a, a, a loop output on HDMI or SDR depending on the model or both. Um, what we can actually do is once we've got this log input coming in and we are essentially rendering this HDR image accurately, we can do a PQ output or a hybrid log gamma output, so the two major HDR standards. Select the color gamma, select the brightness level, uh, of the display that we're going to. So I can actually take an image straight from the center of my camera, create a true HDR image from that with the Atom HDR processing engine, and then output that to a secondary HDR grading monitor, reference monitor, or even a TV for client review uh, or, or purely presentation purposes. So we're gonna you know, remap this, uh, this Sony um, HDR image to HDR standards and output that you know, to, to BT2020 or DCI P3 kind of color spectrums. This is the Atomus Shogun Inferno that we're now about to take a look at. So the Shogun Inferno is the flagship Atomus product supporting 4K P60 and 240p at 2K and HD. So it's very high frame rates uh, with your quad link SDI. So for cameras that don't provide a raw output, 
or uh, use Quadlink um, for doing for doing 4K output. So things like the higher end broadcast cameras, things like Aries and Reds, uh, Sony F5, F55, etc. We have that I/O compatibility with those um, with those cameras. So what we're looking at here is particularly with the Sony FS5. So the FS5 is an incredibly popular camera. Um, it's very small, it's very lightweight, it has a 14-stop dynamic range sensor, it can shoot S-Log3, um, it supports wide color gamuts, but the internal recording capabilities are very limited. 4K is 8-bit 420, uh, even though the HD is 10-bit 422, it is uh, a very compressed codec uh, in the XAVC inside. It's using long op style compression, um, so it's very, very destructive. Sony actually do a very good software upgrade for this, which actually turns the uh, SDI output into a 12-bit RAW bitstream. Now, a lot of people will go, why would I want 12-bit RAW on such an inexpensive compact camera? And the Shogun Inferno really explains this. So the Shogun Inferno takes in that 12-bit RAW input um, we will soon have a firmware update that allows you to record that 12-bit RAW. But otherwise, what we do at the moment and what most users will want is to turn that 12-bit RAW into 10-bit 422 Apple ProRes or Avid DNX HR codecs. So visually lossless, high-quality codecs, which are edit-ready and optimized for production. So if we take a look at this now, I can show you how this works. So here we have the Shogun Inferno hooked up with the FS5 and we have a 200 frames per second uh, continuous 2K input coming in. And we're monitoring that here in HDR um, so we can record this at high frame rate and high dynamic range. So if I were to record some of this footage here, we can see the fan moving and the streamers kind of flying around off that. What I can now do is in playback, when we come into playback, you can now see that we're already playing this back at a reduced frame rate. So we've got a, a sign here indicating this is playing back. However, I can um, choose to play this at different speeds. So I could watch it back at its original 100% uh, speed. Or I can choose to play it at 50%, so now 100 frames per second or I can go down to 25% uh, of that footage, or down to 12.5%, you know, 0.5, or even slower, I can go down to 6.25. So I can see what the natural effect of this super slow-mo is, either in forward motion, or I can do exactly the same speeds in reverse motion. So it gives me a very easy way of seeing the effectiveness of my high frame rate shooting. But the key benefit is, is that I'm not limited by the burst rates which are normally um, handled within camera, around eight seconds or something. So what the uh, Shogun Inferno offers uh, users of cameras such as the FS5 is just a huge elevation in the quality of the production that you can achieve, both in terms of just the simple visual quality that you're going into a 10-bit 422 visually lossless and edit-ready codec, but also the ability to shoot continuous high frame rate um, motion. So if you're covering sporting events or any kind of live event where you want to extract super slow motion from it, you can shoot that entire event uh, at 200 frames per second. We're not limited by the burst times uh, provided in camera. We can be recording that continuously. So as long as we have media capacity available and then it's a simple media change. So if you're recording a, a football match, you can shoot the whole half, you know, up to about an hour and a half worth of, of footage could go on to a single drive, all at 200, 240 frames a second. You know, 4K P60, again, that natural ability to get that slow-mo down uh, into sort of 30 and 25p. But also other cameras, you know, FS7 with an XDCO on it, same sort of functionality applies. But particularly with the FS5, this bundle of the FS5 cost-effective camera plus the FS RAW upgrade and a Shogun Inferno is a considerable saving over an FS7 Mark II, for example. In fact, it's on parallel with just the basic body of the old FS7. Um, other cameras coming out, you know, there's a huge amount of anticipation uh, for the GH5. Again, this can shoot 4K P50 and 60, but internally, that's limited to 8-bit 420. So the Shogun Inferno will massively benefit cameras like the GH5 by unlocking the capability of that camera for 4K P50 and 60 recording at 10-bit 422. Uh, with the paid-for V-Log upgrade for the GH5, that gives you full HDR capabilities with the uh, Shogun Inferno as well, as well as SDI conversion for output. So we can come in HDMI from the camera and go out to other infrastructure over SDI. If you rent other cameras, 
you've got the SDI input uh, and connectivity on there as well. So uh, it's a very, very powerful tool for filmmakers um, wanting to adopt the latest technology with 4K, high frame rate and HDR all in one very, very easy and intuitive device to use.